Any understanding of what a genome looks like and how it came to look that way requires an understanding of what transposons are, how they behave, and how they have influenced genome and therefore species evolution. Bacterial insertion sequences, or IS elements, were first discovered in the 1960s after McClintock's maize, AC, and DS mobile genetic elements. Because they share features of eukaryotic transposons, and because they can carry antibiotic resistance genes, we'll take a look at IS elements and other bacterial transposons, including TNs, and even some bacteriophage that can function as a transposon or alternatively as a virus. So IS elements were described in some detail through the 1970s. There are now many known IS elements, and they tend to be named things like IS1, IS2, IS3, and so on. While they can be shown or made to transpose, IS elements are generally silent when found in bacteria. This is because prokaryotic genomes are compact, unlike the seemingly bloated eukaryotic genomes, so that rampant transposition in a bacterial cell would be expected to have a far greater likelihood of mutating some essential gene, in which case the cell wouldn't survive to tell the tale of transposition. On the other hand, we know that some bacterial transposons have inserted into some well-known genes, for example those of the LAC operon. Recall the role of the LAC operon genes, and then explain how this could have happened without killing the cell. Try to come up with an explanation on your own. So let's look at the structure of a typical IS element. As it says, they range in length from about 750 to a little more than 1400 base pairs. They contain transposase and resolvase genes, which code for enzymes necessary for mobility. At either end of the IS element are inverted repeats, which are part of the IS element structure, and they are also essential for mobility. Genetically engineered elements that lack or have mutated inverted repeats cannot transpose. Wherever they insert, IS elements are also flanked by direct repeats. These are not part of the element itself, but are footprints of insertion in the target DNA, either genomic DNA or plasmid DNA. These direct repeats result from the mechanism of transposition. Again, because of their compact genomes, bacteria can only tolerate low copy numbers of IS elements or other transposons in their genome. If a pair of IS elements should come to lie close to one another, they could be separated by a relatively short stretch of genomic or plasmid DNA. The IS elements and the DNA between them could then become a composite transposon, or a TN element, that can transpose as a unit. As you see here, TN elements on plasmids, for example, typically contain antibiotic resistance genes. These genes will travel along with the IS elements when the TN transposes. When found on an F or fertility plasmid, antibiotic resistance genes can be transferred during conjugation, which is a kind of mating that occurs between compatible bacterial mating types. Subsequent transposition of the TN from the plasmid to the bacterial genome after conjugation would be facilitated by the products of the transposase and resolvase genes in the IS regions of the TN element. These, in fact, are principal pathways for the transfer and spread of antibiotic resistance between bacteria. So-called complex transposons look a bit like a TN element, but usually contain many genes in addition to those necessary for mobility. Those are the yellow boxes in this illustration. Now, some complex transposons resemble a bacteriophage, and mu is in fact a bacterial virus which can function either as a transposon moving within the bacterial genome or as a phage, able to lyse the cell and infect new cells. So let's take just a moment to look at the alternate pathways of bacteriophage infection in general. So here we have a phage particle off to the left approaching a bacteria. So the first thing that happens is the phage particle attaches to the surface of the bacterial cell. The phage DNA then moves into the cell, and the phage can then enter either the lytic or lysogenic pathway. Let's look at the lytic pathway first. The lytic pathway begins when the phage DNA is transcribed, and proteins are translated that will replicate the viral DNA. And you're looking at the replication of the viral DNA. Next, viral coat proteins will package the DNA into infectious phage particles that accumulate and eventually burst from the cell. This is lysis. But alternatively, after attaching to the bacterial cell, the phage can instead undergo lysogeny. In this case, after the DNA is in the infected cell, it approaches the bacterial chromosome. After it integrates into the bacterial genome, the phage DNA will replicate along with the bacterial chromosome. 
This is the lysogenic pathway. If adverse environmental conditions stress the bacterium, the integrated phage can excise from the chromosome and re-enter the lytic pathway, thus escaping a possibly painful fate of the bacterium. Now let's look at the added option for bacteriophage mu. The upper pathway is similar to the lytic pathway for other bacteriophage. Mu can also enter the lysogenic pathway, as shown in the lower part of the illustration. And mu, like other phage, can excise itself and re-enter the lytic pathway under appropriate conditions. Or, once excised, it can instead transpose to other locations in the bacterial chromosome. Like the excision and resumption of lytic activity, transposon activity is often correlated with stress.